so many people have written this movie off as boring or or, or pretentious. What or... if actually it is those things yeah. and you didn't notice because you're boring and pretentious? Uh, it could be. I, I find that comment to be shallow and pedantic. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> Damn you. <laughs> oh. I'm very disappointed! Ah, oh, screw this. I'm walking out. Walked Out, the movie game show podcast. Kiora, and welcome to Walked Out, the movie game show podcast. This is a movie game show. We play games based around movies and reviews, if you didn't already know. <laughs> My name is Ben, and believe it or not, I was the main character in the Lord of the Rings series. <laughs> Joining me is Stuart. <laughs> he is responsible for the largest ownership of sheep within New Zealand. Mm, Oro. Say hello. And uh, we also have Matt with us, who is actually... G'day. Yes, that's Australian, <laughs> you racist. <laughs> he is actually responsible... F- he is actually responsible for hosting all of Jacinda Ardern's barbecues. Welcome, Matt. <laughs> hello. <laughs> oh, man. Cool. So, how was everyone's week did anyone see any new films no but i've watched all of deep space nine Mm. you boomer oh yeah you said you got sad when it ended because you're a pussy i got sad because there was just a lack of closure on everything i'm like i want an extra episode where they just say what happened next Mm. i never watched ds9 it's really good is deep space nine the one where they get like yeeted across the universe and have to drive back for a million years no that's voyager that's next but i'm like I don't know if I want to watch that one. Oh, is that what Voyager is? Yeah, it's a voyage. The only way I know about Voyager is from the, the pop punk song Voyager by, um... God, who's that by? I have no clue. Yeah. But Deep Space Nine is... I definitely recommend it to anyone that's a Star Trek fan. I definitely... I think you, both you and Ben, would definitely enjoy it. <laughs> um... Obviously, it's as good as any other Star Trek show with its weird fucking episodes and stuff. Every now and again, like, oh, we've got to fight for our lives. How do we beat them? I've got to become my own grandfather. <laughs> again. <laughs> again. Yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, it's by Angels and Airwaves. Sorry, I googled that song. I listen to it when I'm running. It's, it's good. Ah. Your lack of uh, closure comment gave me uh, oranges and you back black flashbacks uh, well orange and new black didn't really need closure on that series it was like i was the only the closure i got is that it was six seasons later piper didn't learn anything and um and that's it piper didn't learn anything she belongs in prison uh, i think uh <laughs> spoiler alert to anyone who hasn't seen it um the the diaz storyline literally ends like midway through a scene yeah but that's the point it's meant to be ambiguous oh. but i thought the diaz storyline ended when when rosa came out as by <laughs> that's a brooklyn 99 reference ben if you don't <laughs> you haven't introduced the theme yet ben hit me i i haven't i haven't the theme uh this week is new zealand ah. uh my favorite favoritest country good day wait that's not new zealand let's be honest though be honest with me ben uh, you just want to talk about Taika Waititi, don't you? I do want to talk about Taika Waititi, and we are going to talk about Taika Waititi. Yeah, he's your favourite director. He right? is, of, of all time. One of my favourite human beings. Like, you're an absolute shill. Like, when that god-awful Coca-Cola advert came out, <laughs> you were saying, oh, this is actually not that good. But then you found out who directed it, and like, oh, man, actually, guys, have you seen the Coca-Cola advert? <laughs> now, listen, listen, listen. <laughs> <laughs> things things get better things get better with with age yeah such as um, a 12 year aged coca cola <laughs> cuz your favorite movie is in fact jojo rabbit isn't it it is <laughs> yeah I feel like you're going into the danger zone if I ask you too yeah. much. For anyone in the audience who doesn't know, Ben released his top 100 movies list today. I did. And Taika Waititi's movies are all of them. He's got uh, Lord yeah. of the Rings by Taika Waititi. He's got uh, <laughs> He's got Blade Runner 2049 by Taika Waititi. Uh, he's got Hunt for the Taika People. No, listen, I, I, I only put half of Taika's films. The other half are currently up his anus. I don't think mm. Thor Ragnarok, Eagle vs. Shark, and What We Do in the Shadows didn't make it, unfortunately. Mm. Tough choices. Damn. I guess you just hate Jermaine Clement. On to our first game. Whose review? Where? Whose review? Yes. Whose review? Whose review? My review? Your review. No, whose review? Yeah. Who's review? Where we have all picked a theme movie each. We'll read out three reviews 
two of which are real online reviews, and one of which is our own. Our job is to guess the movie, and for bonus points, can we guess which review is our own? Stu, Matt, heads or tails? Stu first. Heads. Tails. Great. Tails. Oh. Yeah. All right, Matt's going first. Okay, let let's do my first review. This is this is a seven out of ten review for for a Kiwi movie, and and they titled it "Quite a Surprise." Quote: Kiwi comedy unquote is fast becoming a must-watch genre. From what we do in the shadows to Thor Ragnarok, its humor is pleasing and riotously good, and there is nothing else like it. A great concept that's never been done before, and a rather sweet climax. It's easily worth the watch. I believe YTC is involved in some capacity, and the characters are fantastic. Once again, give it a watch. Hmm. So it's it's after I've got either they watched Ragnarok and mm. and what we do in the shadows and went back, or it's after that one, which makes me think there's only one movie that I can think of that it might be. If that's the case, mm. we will have to see what happens. Remember, the reviews can be written up to now, so it can just be looking back. I don't think that's Matt's review. Yeah. I, I think I know what the film is, but really? frustratingly, I can't remember the name of it right now. Oh, okay. <laughs> but I know. I think I know the film you're talking about. Okay. All right, hit us, Matt. All right. Review number two. This one's called cute and quirky not a masterpiece though and it, it doesn't have a star rating i really enjoyed this kiwi movie mostly for the cute and quirky humor the movie does have a problem with pacing and setting up different characters and some of the scenes are just really not believable in this quirky context brackets if you watch it you'll know the scene and then sort of close brackets although i'm not a kiwi so maybe it is believable to strip in a police station but anyway, if you are looking for something nice and different to fill some boredom, this is a good choice. I certainly didn't regret watching it. Hmm. That one should have given away the movie. To strip in a police station? That's the words that I said. Yeah. I, okay, then. I'm in trouble. Ooh. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck, I don't okay. remember that from any of my movies. Okay. He's, he's, he's chosen like a $5 budget indie piece of shit film. I mean, it does mention... One of the reviews does mention Taika Waititi's involved. Yes. It's a masterpiece. Not a masterpiece. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Review number three. This this one's nine out of ten, but they're not stars because there weren't enough reviews, or there weren't. I couldn't find a good enough review early on, so I went to other websites. That's why they all have different stars and tomatoes and things. Uh, all right. This one's called Fun from Insane Skit to Insane Skit. Blank was an insanely fun experience from beginning to end, simultaneously immature in its sense of humour and mature in its message. It follows a friendship as a relationship, alongside a ridiculous premise setting up cutaways and sight gags galore. Virtually it feels like a side character from space got fleshed out and given their own movie and moved to New Zealand. Uh, watch it with someone you like and have a fun time. 9 out of 10. Is this a short film or is it a feature length uh, thing? It, it's it's a film. It's, it's a feature Length Feature film. Length. Okay, this must be one of his earlier things. I've uh, I've no clue. I've not heard of it. Oh God. Okay. Or if it's dropped out of my head, at least. I've I've got something I'm going to take a stab in the dark with. Um, right. But I don't think it is that. Okay. Go on. <laughs> I think the film might be Eagle versus Shark. No. Oh shit. <laughs> it ha I'll give you more clues. I mean, neither of you get a point, but I'll give you more clues. It has Jermaine Clement in it. It's not Fly of the Concords, is it? No. That's a TV show, isn't That's it? That's a TV show, although they might have had a movie. Put, put me out of my misery. I think it's got Taika Waititi in a bathtub at some point. It does not. It doesn't? Oh shit, I've got no idea what you're talking about then. Taika Waititi is not in it. He is a producer. Do you want more clues? Because more clues in... It has like... No, I'm not, I've not even heard no, of I'm this. No, I'm not going to... I've gonna, not heard of this. I'm not going to get it. It has jokes where people talk at high speed and it cuts through multiple shots of the premise. I've got no idea. Oh, no idea. Oh, okay. I was trying to falsely lead you into Hunt for the Wilder People there, but it's Breaker Upperers. Breaker, Breaker Upperers. Upperers. I've not heard of that. You Matt, haven't heard of Breaker Upperers? At no point did I think it was Hunt for Wilder People because the moment yeah. you mentioned the strip in the police station, that does not take place in that movie. <laughs> but there are police in that movie. <laughs> I've, I've watched that film to the point that I can basically remember everything about it. I never remember that bit. Mm. 
Oh, you didn't watch the you didn't watch the extended edition. <laughs> what? Where he strips in the police station? How would you find out about the Silmarillion? <laughs> the Breaker Uppers, twenty eighteen. Oh, twenty eighteen. Yes, recent movie. For the right price, BFFs Jen and Mel will ruthlessly end any romance. But when one grows a conscience, it threatens to derail their relationship. Dun dun dun. I think there's a reason I've not watched this. It is actually very good. Yeah. Well, now you've given it away. That doesn't give it away, you stupid bitch. And, and no, all of my reviews were positive, you might remember. You're a stupid bitch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I watched it, watched it with Lucy uh, over um, Netflix Party. I think I know which one's yours. I think based... I don't think you... in you, no, At no point in your life, unless you're trying to throw us off, I've got... Because if you... You don't use the word kiwi, ever. Don't I? And you don't use the word quirky. Don't I? I think it's number... I think it's the 9 out of 10 fun uh fun movie i don't use the word kiwi i don't think so i've never heard you use the word kiwi apart from just now just now you've used yeah. it a few yeah. times in the last few minutes because <laughs> yeah. i think it's either uh review number two or review number three okay but i think it was review number three but ben what do you think okay Stuart thinks number three i'm gonna go for review number three as well um the other two just didn't sound like you and why do you think that ben i don't know just just from knowing you for so long, the other two just didn't sound like you. Well, you're both right. Yes! Okay, we get some yeah, points. Yeah, we're great friends. So that makes up for neither of you even having heard of one of the first movies that comes up when you Google Kiwi movies. It didn't. Oh, didn't it? Just for me. The first movie that comes up for me is like Hunt for Wilder People. That's always number one. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I Google Kiwi movies and you get Boy, Breaker Upperers, and Came a Hot Friday. Oh, boy, he's fucking... Oh... We know you like Boy, Ben, because it's on your list. Yeah, it is. So, Breaker Upper is good movie. You liked it? What drew you to it? Excellent movie. Really liked it. It's very fun and entertaining. And the bit yeah. about it, them like brutally ending relationships is, is very true. Like, a lot of the bits are there, like, they show up dressed as in, like, reasonable police officer costumes and just tell a woman her fucking husband's died. He's like, yeah, he's gone missing. He went swimming. <laughs> Or God. like, there's there's oh, one God. where like, because someone's paid them to do it, they show up as like country singers, and one of them's yeah. got like some flowers and a box of chocolates, and the other one's uh, got like a banjo or whatever the American one is, and she's singing like, oh. Cherie don't wanna be with you no more, Cherie don't wanna be with you no more. Oh my god! And that, and then, and that, but like while all that's happening, they're having a conversation about the fact that one of them is dating a teenager, and the guy is just like extremely confused at the door. He's like, "What the fuck?" It's 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 a very funny, weird, occasionally dark movie. To be honest, that ticks all of our boxes. I kind of want to watch this now. Yeah, you should watch it. It's good. If you if you want to remember it, just Google the words Kiwi movies. And, uh, you know, you stop being wrong about what comes up when you Google it. <laughs> oh, I know what happened. I didn't once type in Kiwi movies. I typed in New Zealand movies. Hang on, let's see if that's different. New Zealand movies. Oh, don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. My movie might come up. Oh, it does come up differently. Yeah, don't, but don't look at the list. Put it away. Put it away. Put it oh. away. Yeah, that's right. Okay, bef we're in the danger zone. So, Ben. Yeah. Uh, do you want to go next or should I go uh, next? I'm going to say heads. You can go next. I'll be a. I'll yeah. be the Wait, hang on. You two. Um, one yeah. of Stuart say heads or tails. I said heads. Oh well, then Ben goes first. Sorry. Oh bollocks. <laughs> oh for fuck's sake. <laughs> okay, fine. Sorry, buddy. Uh, all right. Cool. Hit us, Ben. Right. The first review um, is titled "Brilliant," and it's got a ten out of ten by it. Is it just um, the words, good movie? <laughs> the review is, quite literally, the best film I've ever seen. Genuinely flawless. Boy. Everything about this film is perfect. The dialogue, story, cinematography, soundtrack. Boy. boy. Everything <laughs> is just magnificent. <laughs> well, the name may give you boy? the impression that this is some kind of slapstick comedy, or even a children's film. Don't be fooled. The subject boy. matter it's at boy, its core it? is deadly serious. <laughs> oh, it's boy. <laughs> It's boy. <laughs> it's actually boy. You're both disqualified. <laughs> what was that? I didn't hear. You're disqualified. You're both disqualified. <laughs> is it, it actually boy? Is it boy? Is is boy your guess? Well, yeah. it's our preemptive no. guess. 
<laughs> it's our preemptive guess. Just tell, don't tell us the actual movie. Is it boy? <laughs> it's not boy. Oh. Hunt <laughs> <laughs> for the water people. <laughs> right. <laughs> ten out of ten. Uh, okay. Good. Uh, I was not listening for any of that. Oh, the, uh, Can this... you read that entire review again? No, no, yeah. you know what? I won't. <laughs> I'm not going to. Okay, fine. You don't have to read it again. I remember it saying that it's deadly serious. The, the... Deadly serious. It's deadly serious. The, the second review mm. also is a 10 out of 10. Boy. Um, and it's called I Laughed and I Cried. This film was exceptional and one of the best I've seen this year. The director has mm. great comedic vision. And the cast is phenomenal. It was weird, funny, heartwarming, and heartbreaking. And I think it's definitely worth the watch. Yeah, this is sounding a lot like that movie Boy. <laughs> <laughs> Have you even seen Boy? What was the title for that one? The title for that one was I Laughed and I Cried. I mm. cried. And you gave it, a, and it was a 10 out of 10. It was a 10 out of 10. I don't know, that's a lot of Taika Waititi. You are correct, it is a lot of Taika movies. Mm. It's shaping like a taika because he's got a very distinctive yeah, directive style he's got a uh, distinctive directorial like vision but also like he has a few running themes because he always like tries to contrast seriousness with ch like childish wonder and a child's point of view yeah he does that so well and also a very modern child's point of view mm. it's not mm. like like mm. it's built around a character who clearly can see and hear what's around them mm. but like understands it in a very specific way like in hunt for the wilder people where you know he's uh he sees himself as a criminal outlaw and things when the worst he's done is set fire to a post box yeah <laughs> i think i'm leaning towards taika not sure which taika movie but ben if you want to hit us with review trez cool trez review uh this one is short but might give the game away okay that's usually how this goes this one is titled a little masterpiece mm, little among the best poetic anti-war films made congratulations uh matt we're gonna say it after three <laughs> okay one two three it's jojo, jojo rabbit. rabbit it's jojo rabbit i get <laughs> yeah yeah listen i gave the game away i want to talk about this film so fucking badly yeah <laughs> i know you do See, that's the thing ben you are allowed to just talk about a movie after the game <laughs> yeah I'm, I'm 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 not in it for the game this week because we both knew you were going to do one of the ones that you never shut the fuck up about. yeah <laughs> yep <laughs> yep -ity, yep -ity, yep i'll be honest absolutely masterpiece i'm not sure yeah e excellent movie yeah so all of those were positive so it could be any one of them i don't think it's review number one can you go through the titles again ben okay so number one was titled excellent yes and that was the deadly serious one okay number two number two number two was titled i laughed and i cried which you did we were there. And mm -hmm. number three was titled A Little Masterpiece. I think it's mm. review number two. I think mm. Laughed and Cried is what you literally did. And I don't think you described this as a little masterpiece. You described this as a full-blown give it all the Oscars yeah. masterpiece. See, I've ruled out number three for similar reasons, but I, oh, I'm torn between one and two. Because it could be one for the bit where he does, you know, where it's like, it's deadly serious. That's sort of how Ben talks, where occasionally he's like, it's deadly serious. <laughs> oh. yeah. However, I think the, that first review re mentions reservations going into it. Ben would mm. never have any reservations he didn't. about he any was of... He was very optimistic the whole way through. But then again, it is yeah. about a Nazi child, which Ben was. Christ. So... <laughs> <laughs> He might have reservations about, you know, oh, I don't want them to mess it up. <laughs> you know, I want to feel represented in movies. Yeah. Right, I'm going to say review number two, final answer. Matt? Mm. I, uh, I'm going to flip a coin. How many do you want to flip? <laughs> oh, so many. Hang on, I'm counting all the heads and tails, and if there's more heads, I'm going review number one. It's flawless logic. Review number two. You've locked in review number two? Yeah, and now I have like eight quids worth of coins on my desk. You are both very, very, very wrong. Very wrong. Oh. Fuck. See, Matt, this is what happens when you act like a pussy. You should just commit. <laughs> it was actually review number one. Yeah. Oh. oh, so I was right about the deadly serious thing. Yeah, you were right about the deadly serious thing. Because I can't imagine you going, it's deadly serious. Yeah, it's de 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 deadly serious. But you didn't deliver it like that when you read it, which is what part of what 
made me so unsure. That's because you were shouting the word boy throughout. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Now that you mention it, we may have had an effect on the delivery of that. You, you may have done, <laughs> and your ability to hear it. <sighs> yeah. Well, we asked you to read it again, but you, yeah. you were a Well, we were being <laughs> first, so... Yeah. And and now now I'm in the lead, so uh, you know you, you can uh, suck my balls. Are you in the lead? No idea. I'm just saying I am. No, you're not. I'm, I'm hoping that you're going to believe. If anything, me. I'm in the lead. But we'll see. That depends on how many points Matt was me and Matt are allowed to have. Uh, so real quick, it's up to you, I guess. Ben, are we allowed to have that, or are you going to take it away from us because we kept shouting, boy? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not going to take it away from you. Yay! Okay, so point so uh, point to Matt and myself. Yay! So you want to talk about JoJo? Talk about JoJo. So I trust that you stand by your review. I hear you. I hear you didn't like it, Ben. I I, I absolutely stand by my, my review. This is the only film, and you guys were with me when we came out of this. Yes, that has left me genuinely speechless. I, I... No, Infinity War left you speechless. Yeah, that's also true. I was there for that as well. Also, you say speechless, but actually, it was it was the opposite of that. It was it left you couldn't shut the fuck up after about ten minutes. Yeah, after ten minutes, you were weeping. Though. We needed to go to the fucking pub, and and you did in fact laugh and cry. I mean, I was weeping as well. Yeah. Also, we would usually go to the pub if they weren't all closed. This <laughs> it, it's it's one of the the few films that I have absolutely no like nickels with anything i've got no problems i can't find fault with it even nitpicks mm, you do hate nickels i have a small preference uh it's not it, it's kind of a nitpick but it's more like a personal preference what, what's up with it is the thing is okay deep spoilers uh so for the youtube video i'm gonna put a time code to skip uh, etc but if you're on spotify no such luck i'm afraid so you can watch it on youtube yeah don't don't, don't spoil it for yourself um, definitely worth a watch, though. Um, <clears throat> okay, and spoilers ahead. My personal preference uh, is the moment uh, Scarlett Johansson, the moment her character gets hung, Hanged. that knocks the wind right out of my sails. Hmm. And any comedy that comes after that just feels absolutely hollow for me. And I just, I was so... Oh, it hit so hard. So you were too devastated by that to like enjoy the rest of it. Yeah, because there was comedy afterwards. Mm. It's good comedy. It wasn't so bad the second time around because I was, you know, I knew it was coming. But the first time around, I'm watching that happens, and then other comedy, I'm like, I can't laugh anymore. I I just can't. It hit too hard. Mm. I, I think the only comedy that comes after that point, if I remember correctly, is is kind of really fucking dark comedy so uh yorkie blows up that shop with the bazooka um then they're talking about the russians coming in and uh fucking the dogs no uh yeah. and the japanese not looking aryan yeah that too and uh, rebel wilson strapping a grenade onto the back of a child and sending him to go and hug an american oh god i forgot that bit. <laughs> that was that this was to be honest, I wasn't as devastated by the thing as... Well, actually, in the moment I was, but it didn't have a lingering effect like it did for you. Like, I still found the rest... I, I wasn't as speechless, and I still found the rest... Like, I still think it's amazing, but I found the rest of it still quite enjoyable. It, it doesn't It doesn't bother me, because I think it leaves enough breathing room in between her getting hung yeah. and it starts to be funny again. Like, up to that point, it's... Jojo going back to the house, trying to murder Elsa, and they both have a heart to heart, and it's got like a combina a compilation of him, like scavenging around bins for food. So it's pretty moody after that point. That scene right afterwards uh, is, is so powerful uh, because the music's completely silent. He's there with the knife, and he's devastated. I honestly had no idea whether or not he was going to kill her or not. Mm. Uh, the girl in the wardrobe. Oh, I didn't think they were going to, but I. Th honestly thought it was on the table oh, really that yeah i was yeah i was i was i was the same as you i was in shock at that bit um i had no idea yeah. what was going to happen next I, I i was also in shock about the mum dying but i never thought that mm. the kid was really gonna hurt anyone because it just you know, that would kind of undercut a lot of it well it would have undercut it but it would be a loss of innocence and you know evil corrupts you know maybe I'm not yeah. saying I would have preferred that, but Jesus Christ, I thought it would have happened. Oh, guys, 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 guys. Have you guys 
have you guys watched the alternative i think i sent you the link ages ago but do you remember the alternative version of the death of Hitler scene? Yes. Yes, I yeah. do. Yes, the extremely cartoony one where he like sort of ad libs a load of like dying bit and it's really weird. Yeah, I'm glad they didn't use that. Yeah, you can very much see how much like workshopping they had to go through to like tightrope walk between childish and, you know, trivialising the Holocaust. Which, as as this movie famously did, and annoyed Ben. <laughs> what? Because the thing is, the cut version, yeah, it's a lot more cartoony, but it also it undercuts the theme of rejecting your indoctrination. And, mm. you know, yes, he says, fuck off Hitler in both versions, yeah. but it hits a lot harder when he kicks him out of the window. <laughs> like, that is the most satisfying scene in the uh, movie. Yes, and that, and the, like, doesn't drag on too long. Yeah. It it that that that's one of the most satisfying villain deaths for me in yeah. in cinema. Yeah, that's right. Hey Ben, do you remember who it was? Because just after the movie came out, I listened to the reviews. I looked at the reviews, and there was the guy who said that it trivialized the Holocaust. Oh, oh, oh my God! Um, and you hated him for like a week. It was oh God, mm. I still hate him. Yes. Um, oh, it was the guy who fills in on Mark Kermode's movie review show on Radio Five when he's off sick or whatever. Mm. Robbie Collin, Robbie Face yes. Collin. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. Um. Really, really, really lost every single little bit of respect I have for him as a film critic for that one. He didn't like one movie, therefore everything else is invalidated. I don't agree with any, like, bit of his review. Like, Mark Kermode reviews it, and at least when he reviews it, he d- he didn't, like, love it. Yeah. But there's bits in it that you think, okay, well, you know, that's, like, your personal preference. Robbie C- Face basically spent the entire... <laughs> review uh interrupting the radio host oh yeah <laughs> and just absolutely destroying the film for no reason other than yeah i don't know really it's just trivializing the holocaust <laughs> which it doesn't mm, it doesn't it, it doesn't really show it to be honest it doesn't there's not like a if you actually watch the film there's not a lot of like holocaust focused stuff in there he got caught up with the cgi butterfly oh, oh God. And yeah he just lingered on that moment but like Okay, yeah, uh, good luck training a real butterfly. The butterflies were very important. See, I I watched that in cinema with you two. <laughs> yeah, like, I didn't even notice it was CGI. I'm going to be honest. When I was in the film, I... Yes, you fucking did. I was, no, I no. I watched this movie in cinema with you two. I've had this discussion with Stuart before. I watched this movie in cinema with you two, and when that butterfly came on, you both went, that looks a bit shit. And you like, Leonard. Like, <laughs> I don't remember doing that. <laughs> That was and, then the, and then the mum died, and you forgot. That was a, I don't remember doing that. I didn't say that. <laughs> you were yeah. like, eh, like, fuck it. <laughs> I can forgive a bit of dodgy CGI. Uh, you did forgive it, but it me. is very funny to watch you two like retcon your own memory. Oh, no, no, I wasn't retconning. I can, I can believe that I got a bit put off by the CGI butterfly. Yeah. Anne Marie, when I watched it with her, she was like, oh, CGI butterfly, and I'm yeah. like, yeah, well, <laughs> shut up. The bit's coming. What bit? Just keep watching the bit. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm, I'm gonna be honest like e- even to this day i i don't think it's bad i really don't oh. what the mum dying you're right you're right it's not jesus me. christ long story short let me wrap up here long story short if you haven't seen this film go and see it for god's sake mm. it, it's just mm. the best and i mean that literally yeah just just watch it just just go go watch the movie just uh, don't even think about it just throw it out there just watch the movie great uh, so that's the okay. end, guys. Um, thank you for joining us, and uh, no, wait. see you next <laughs> what time. What about me? Uh, who? It's time for Stu's <laughs> review. Well, I suppose. Right, round three. So, so far the scores, it's uh, one point to Matt and Ben, two points to me. So you guys have got to pull a hat out of the bag to do this one. Okay. All right, review number one. A masterpiece. Blank is a thought-provoking story full of incredible imagery, stunning performances, and a poignant soundtrack. Holly Hunter gives a performance of a lifetime going above and beyond for this role. Despite her character's limitations, Hunter is able to combine an entire spectrum of emotion without saying a single word, and her Oscar was well truly deserved. Jane Campion has written and directed a hauntingly beautiful film which will stay with you long after the credits have rolled. 9 out of 10. Okay, okay. Review number 2. Sexual Abuse. (laughs) Great. (laughs) This is a wonderfully well-made film. (laughs) Top acting, filming, and story. The only thing bothering me is that the film is really saying that it's alright to sexually abuse a woman. 
It makes her fall in love with you. Eight out of ten. <laughs> huh. Yeah. Matt, do you want to take this one? Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, I'll go to s- review number three. <clears throat> Touching and beautifully made. <laughs> what? Touching. Blank is one of the best movies I've ever seen. It's definitely unusual, set in the Martian New Zealand forest, but it's still fantastic and so touching. The performances by Holly Hunter, Anna Paquin, Sam Neill, and Harvey Keitel were amazing, and the first two definitely fully deserved the Oscars that they received. 10 out of 10. I have no idea what the movie is, but earlier I did Google New Zealand movies and you told me not to. Yeah. So I'm guessing it's Heavenly Creatures. No. Oh. I have no idea. All right, Ben? Um... Oh my god. I'm I'm trying to think of the films that Holly Hunter's been in. Um I, I just have no idea about this movie. <laughs> I can't think of any movies where someone moves to or from Scotland. It's it's on, it's pretty much on like the top of all of the New Zealand lists, but that's why I thought you might get it really easily. Yeah, see I searched Kiwi lists, that's the problem. <laughs> yeah. Um I I have no idea. No worries. Uh, the movie was The Piano. Oh, it was The Piano. Hmm. Oh, d- d- Family Guy took the piss out of that. Did they? God. Oh, have they? <laughs> yeah. God. Oh. Tell me about the Family Guy version. Oh, God. It, it, it's it's literally basically what you've described, but it's a, like it, it's basically them just like taking the piss out of the film. It's the episode where Peter like goes to um, anti-misogynist ther- therapy. <laughs> <laughs> And it ends with, like, I'm leaving, and I'm taking my piano with me. I'll let you uh, guess whose review uh, beforehand. Uh, uh, I'll give you the titles again. So, A Masterpiece, 9 out of 10. Okay. Sexual Abuse, 8 out of 10. Touching and Beautifully Made, 10 out of 10. I think you wrote Sexual Abuse. Yeah, I'm, I'm not going to lie, I also think that. I was not a Karen this week. Yeah. It was no, review number one. You're both wrong. A masterpiece. Damn. Don't get me wrong. I do agree ish with what review number two had to say. However, I purposely left those thoughts out of my review because honestly, to I felt that that would be a discredit to this film to mm. write it off like that just to because of problematic elements. Yeah, it's not. This movie is not saying. Uh, that sexual abuse is acceptable. It's all part of the story. It's just, it's showing it rather than selling it. Exactly. Um, uh, Amory had wasn't able to watch to the end because of, uh, she found it very upsetting with how it was all, all proceeding. <laughs> she didn't know how it ended. I didn't know how it ended, but I decided to commit to this film because I wanted to see what happens. But lots of people were under the impression that this is a romantic movie. It it's got romantic elements to it mm. uh, like the soundtrack alone is incredible yeah and the like the the way the piano is played all played by holly hunter she actually was she taught herself or took lessons of how to play the piano for this movie um going right above and beyond so is it kind of like the taming of the shrew where for some reason people talk about it as romantic but it's really just a guy abusing his wife for yes. the entire thing huh the story is, she moves to New Zealand from Scotland. Yes. She's a mute with her daughter. Sam Neill's character, her husband, yeah. basically sells her piano to uh, an, a local man. And the local man and asks for lessons from Ada, Holly Hunter's character. Yes. Um, then he's listening to her play. He falls in love with the way she plays and her music. Uh, it's pretty transparent what's going on because her and the piano are basically one and the same-ish. Yeah. Uh, and so him falling in love with her music is him falling in love with her. However, he, regrettably, the only way he can express that love, if you want to call it that, mm. is by asking for sexual favors. Mm. And he says, if you do these things, I'll give you your piano back. And So he, he steals from and blackmails her, basically. Exactly. Okay. And at the end of the movie, she still falls in love with him and runs off with him. Hmm. That's where people can get absolutely get that message. That that's the yikes. Yeah, that's the yikes moment. However, she then tries to kill herself. So, what does that tell you? Some people very much don't understand the difference between portraying something and essentially advertising something. 
So it, it's it's showing her running off with him, but not like because is she calling it love at the end? I think so. Mm. She she goes like earlier on in the film. Uh, she runs off to him with after she gets the piano back. She then goes back to him and mm. makes love to him mm. uh, with no pressure at all. So she willingly does that afterwards. Yeah. So again, it's the yikes factor, like and can especially give men the wrong impression that you just got a strong arm and long enough eventually they'll tire out or some yeah. shit like like in the taming of the shrew to be honest this just sounds to me a lot like taming of the shrew and i can't stop thinking about it what is the taming of the shrew i've not heard of that one it, it's a shakespeare play ah yeah it's one of those ones that occasionally gets referred to as romance but the entire plot is a guy marrying someone who doesn't want to marry him and then uh just basically locking her in a room and starving her until she claims to love him ah. and then it ends and it just ends like that actually there's a lot more it, there's actually a lot more to it the thing is i haven't actually seen the piano so i have no idea how much this connection is just me reading into the things you've said and how much it's actually anything like the movie i would definitely recommend to the both of you it's definitely one of those feel good want to feel less goods it stays with you though i was thinking about it for a couple of days afterwards i and I had an unbelievably hard time reviewing this. I wasn't mm. sure if I was going to do it for the podcast. The hard part was trying to find reviews for the Who's Review uh, bit. Yeah. So many people have written this movie off as boring or, or, or pretentious or whatever. Mm. It's really not. It's really, really well produced. It's well directed. What if actually it is it is those things yeah. and you didn't notice because you're boring and pretentious? It could be. I, I find that comment to be shallow and pedantic. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <Damn> <laughs> oh. I was very eager to hear what Anne-Marie had to say about this. And, I, and she's actually written me a small segment. Oh, in the girlfriend's review section of the... <laughs> A yes, a girlfriend's a girlfriend's review. I just because I feel like as a as a man, you know, it's like we're just a couple of men sitting around determining whether or not uh, the sexual abuse in this movie is or is not acceptable. Mm. And honestly, we don't really get that say. Yeah. However, Jane Champion is a woman, and it's written. It's wholly original. It's not based on a book. She wrote Ooh. and directed this. Based on nothing but taming of the. <laughs> 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 oh god and, okay so uh girlfriend reviews uh she says as a woman in 2021 watching this for the first time the sexual coercion and assault element overwrote any merits of the film some from personal experience some from different attitudes from sexual behaviors regarding consent but overall i feel that it glamorizes sexual exploitation and stockholm syndrome the piano is her only real voice and in order to get it back she has to follow the requests of this man who she subsequently falls in love with. With Ada falling in love with this man who has coerced and trapped her, it reinforces the idea that women are simply worn down and to be ind made independent of thought and feeling and that they will eventually line up with what the man wants. Because, of course, society has taught us that women are only there to serve and satisfy. Now, she wasn't able to watch to the end because she found a lot of it quite upsetting. It gets really grim yeah. near, near the second half, especially regarding Sam Neill's character. Because it sounds like with what you mentioned about the ending where like she goes back to him, but then she turns out to commit suicide, that actually... She attempts suicide. It's, you know, not, you know, it's sort of, again, not actually expressing those things. But then if, if she didn't see the end, I don't know. <laughs> I also haven't seen the end. I'm just going by what you said. <laughs> In terms of having seen the end, she's most of the movie closer to it than I am. <laughs> that, that is true. Okay, to end on a semi-lighter note, the ending was actually my was actually the most interesting part of it. Mm. So she, uh, she's on the boat. Uh, the Maui are rowing her uh, to a new part of New Zealand with her new uh, husband, etc. And she, the piano is with her. She then says, "I don't want the piano. Throw it overboard." Um, hmm. they begrudgingly they agree to as the piano is sinking there's a rope that she sticks her leg in as it's winding down it wraps around her leg and she's pulled down into the water with it so she did this intentionally hmm. she's falling down and then she changes her mind she kicks her shoe off swims to the surface and she's saved 
it then transitions we get her internal monologue we see her life in her new her new life everything's angelic and perfect uh she's got a she's got a new piano she's married her daughter's happy but then it cuts it she says but at my at night i dream about my piano laying at the bottom of the ocean with me hanging above it and that's the final shot is her piano at the ocean with her body hanging above it and i'm like oh so i rewound it and that's when it really hit me how angelic and ideal this ending scene is and it makes me wonder did she actually kill herself or did she attempt to kill herself and change her mind and then in her final moment she's thinking of how it could have been Hmm. that does sound ambiguous yeah see i kind of want to hear amory's opinion again but having actually watched the end maybe you should take away her piano until she watches the end of the movie <laughs> oh, jesus christ oh. <laughs> god Sorry, that was really sake. <laughs> oh god you're just too gonna... much you're just too much <laughs> yeah um, to, to, um, um, i think that does also tell um, an important lesson about suicide and why you shouldn't do that um, because it can always get better yeah <clears throat> is the is the is the lesson i think they were going for there uh <clears throat> Yeah, I I did want to say I uh, I think y- your choice of film is is it's welcome. It's surprising to me, um, mainly because like especially your choice of of review, because y- you're the one who fucking complained about um, Love, Death, and Robots because it had too many beautiful boobies and and penises in it. Oh no, <laughs> Love, Death, no, you can't compare this to Love, Death, and Robots. Love, Death, and Robots had titties every fucking scene. <laughs> For the sake of having titties in it. Now, I love titties as much as the next straight man, but like, I don't need them all the time. Just let science fiction be science fiction. Just like, let a drama be a drama. Well, um, that's what the penises are there for. No, but no, no. Thing is, right, I'm watching the piano. At no point did I think the sexual exploitation was there arbitrarily. I thought this was a, regrettably, this is a very realistic take on how these people would re- react. Uh, this is a woman in a shitty situation mm. and all the men around her they don't know what's fucking right and wrong because why the fuck would they know any better because no one knows any fucking better so she is a, a, a commodity to be bought and sold from the very beginning and wait is she bought and sold? It, yeah well ish uh, no well she she didn't meet Sam Neil, but she was already married to him uh, when she meets him at the very beginning oh I, I missed that part <laughs> she has no freedom anyway point is the sexual nature and in this film and the nudity in here it's done with purpose and reason love death robots it's nothing all right that's why i don't like that series Hmm. like it has okay don't get when the yogurt took over that's a great short Hmm. some of the other ones are really good as well but it's just every single episode there's titties and dicks and (laughs) vulgar crap all over it and it just detracts from my viewing experience i'm sorry for getting angry this is me karening see this is what happens when Stuart doesn't karen inside his reviews he has to karen inside the podcast yeah i go full karen on that jesus christ uh guys i have an announcement you're pregnant um no ben has one point matt has one point Stuart has two points oh god oh, shit we have a clear winner for once. I'm really happy with that win. I bet you are, you son of a bitch. Oh, yeah. Um, so, because there is a tie, and to decide who comes in a respectful second and shameful third place, let's play Shooting Blanks. Pew, pew, pew. Stu is going to read out a synopsis, but with words blanked out. And the quickest to guess the film wins the round. Cool. Stuart, find a synopsis. <laughs> Synopsize us. <clears throat> okay, so for second place, all to play for, ears open. Blank, Martin Freeman, lives a simple life with his fellow blank in the blank until the blank blank, played by blank, arrives to convince him to join a group of blank. The Hobbit, an unexpected journey. Correct. Ben wins. Oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> I got worried oh. there. I'm like, oh shit, I thought I'd get it from that. Okay. 
So, Ben, you've come second place. Respectful second. I'll take that. For some reason, I went and imagined his character from Black Panther. <laughs> I was like, what the fuck is this movie? <laughs> And then, and then when you said, and then Ben jumped in about the time I realised as well. I I was about I was about to say Fargo, but then realised the version he's in is a TV show. So Stu, a big congratulations for winning this week. Thank you very much. Um, I'm I'm very happy with my one point one points. Um, yeah. You know they say the point one doesn't count, but I think it does. Second place is where it's all at. So really. No, I think Join we know second who, place. who wins. I think we know who wins. So, mm. next week's host is our very own Mateus. Thank you. That's not what Matt is short for. It totally is. Um, okay. So, <laughs> <laughs> Matholomew, um, would you like to reveal next week's theme? If you're wondering, it's short for Matrice. Next week's theme, mm, I think it's going to be the movie's of one famous director narrows it down yes it does narrow it down of one quentin tarantino (laughs) (laughs) your audio cut out for me so that sounded like absolute (laughs) trash but i'm sure it was very good (laughs) it was like Okay, I'm excited. And for the first time ever, we're going to mix it up. I say mix it up. So to mix it up a bit as well, shortly before the release of next episode, we're going to have a movie club-ish episode, like a 0.5. We're going to watch one of Quentin Tarantino's movies, talk about that, get that out of our system first. And then make the movie game show. So it'll be separate from the game show. But if you want to have a further discussion about one of his movies, uh, we'll, you know, that'll be available as well. Uh, so Matt, what's the movie you wanted to watch? I'm going to say Jackie Brown. Okay, cool. I've not watched uh, Jackie Brown. Ben, you're unusually quiet. What's your opinion on Jackie Brown? I think it is an acceptable Tarantino film. Okay. Hmm. Yeah, we'll be talking about Jackie Brown, which I have not seen either. I just picked it. You picked it at random. Okay, we're going to watch Jackie Brown, shortly followed by the Quentin Tarantino episode. So that's to look forward to... In about two weeks. Yes. So... It's time to say goodbye, or as goodbye. they say in New Zealand, goodbye. So <laughs> you can you can find us on all your favourite social medias, Facebooks, Twitter, the the the. Yeah, you can yeah you can follow me on Twitter at Stroopatat, one tweet a year. Yeah, so YouTube channel Stroopatat as well. You can't miss us. We've got them all on there on a playlist. So please like, favourite if you really want, and comment. Let us know other themes you want us to do in the future. Well, that's why it's Facebook and the Twitter, like, at us. And tell us what you want us to watch, what you think we should talk about and for future games, what you think. Um, really means the world to us. Um, Very good. And I'm, yeah, so I'm Stuart. I'm Matt. You can follow Matt at, at Ninsudo for his two tweets a year. Yes. I'm just going to just stop plugging my Twitter because I don't know why I did that in the first place. <laughs> and uh, you can't follow me. Please, please, please leave me alone. I enjoy, I enjoy my props. And follow Ben in real life. Goodbye, audience. Goodbye, everyone. Yes. This has been great. A See great you guys next New time. Zealand goodbye. Bye. Adios. Adios. <laughs>